as we all know, lymphedema is a challenging condition to manage. And I was reminded of that even today in some of the conversations I had with some of the physicians up in the uh, Mount Sinai Hospital I was talking with, just about the difficulty of the, the nature of lymphedema and sometimes the uh, demographic of the patients that come in and sometimes the underserved population. And I appreciate all of you taking the time this evening. And I'd like to take this moment to welcome our esteemed speaker, uh, Dr. John Horowitz attended the Temple University School of Medicine in Pennsylvania, where he also completed his surgical residency. From there, he went on to the Ohio State University Hospital for Fellowship Training in Peripheral Vascular Surgery. He's a diplomat of the American Board of Venous and Lymphatic Medicine, is board certified in vascular surgery, surgery and has been practicing vascular surgery in Orlando since 1993. Dr. Horowitz is active in many societies and is an active member of the AVLS. So with that, Dr. Horowitz, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Eric. Uh, again, I do want to thank everybody for taking time out <clears throat> to learn a little bit more about the management of lower extremity edema. Um, it probably comes as no surprise to anybody, but I take care of a lot of patients with leg swelling. And those patients range from the entire gamut of uh, uh, obese patients to uh, patients that you wouldn't really think if you uh, saw their legs would think they had much edema, that they might be um, stylish women that have uh, pedal or ankle edema, but is very uh, bothersome to them. But the, um, the, the main uh, thing that I know about this patient population is that by and large, it's a neglected population, not so much by intent, but uh, I believe because we practice in busy environments and the care of patients with lower extremity edema is somewhat uh, resource and time intensive. And um, also because I don't know that as practitioners, we really realize what the options are, what we have to offer patients with lower extremity edema. So um, what I hope to do in this short presentation is just uh, give you some of the techniques of practice management that I uh, employ to um, make it easier to take care of these patients within a busy practice so that they can be effectively managed and not uh, neglected um, and um, so that um, it is not quite so um, onerous really uh, as a practitioner. So Eric, uh, that being said, let's go ahead and start the presentation. So um, just a little bit about my relationship with Lymphopress. Uh, I don't really have any, uh, let's say, uh, financial relationship to Lymphopress at all. Uh, I know through 25 years of practice and through my initial um, education, Lymphopress was always the uh, uh, gold standard uh, when it came to intermittent uh, pneumatic compression. And uh, as time has gone on, there have been other devices that have entered the market primarily to compete, but in quality and in and design really uh, don't compete. And so I think the effectiveness has been has been less. So, you know, in general, what I'm gonna reflect on today is the uh, largest piece of the pie here, which is chronic venous insufficiency. So the other um, causes of lymphedema, you know, whether it's primary lymphedema or uh, cancer-related lymphedema, my focus today is really on flebo lymphedema or lymphaticovenous disorders and you know the line is not always clearly drawn between them um, you know in general um, and within chronic venous insufficiency is a whole range of uh, problems post-thrombotic uh, disorders um, and just venous reflux with venous hypertension what I have always felt is when the, a patient comes to me with leg swelling, uh, 
Um, as a practicing uh, vein specialist, uh, I, I practice out of a dedicated uh, vein center at this point, even though I'm a trained vascular surgeon. Um, I think that you need to address the swelling as one aspect and then the venous insufficiency as another aspect. Um, so what I call is two parallel treatment plans. So the idea is when somebody comes in with swelling, you need to offer them something for the swelling and the aspect of venous insufficiency and venous hypertension as part of that problem um, is important, but it should be a parallel course of treatment. And uh, without question, the initiation of treatment of the edema is primary. Um, people have to show uh, improvement in their edema before any kind of vein therapy would be effective. Um, and unfortunately, this, uh, as vein care has kind of exploded, um, really has not been the case uniformly. I mean, if, uh, if a patient with leg swelling were in a uh, let's say a, a vein center that was not as dedicated to comprehensive care, they probably might have a vein procedure performed with little attention to the, um, with little attention actually to the edema itself. So uh, what I have put together is just a little bit of what we do in our practice uh, as the initial algorithm for treating the lymphatic venous congestion, somebody presents with swelling. Um, so the first thing, obviously, is a compression garment. Well, for the most part, if somebody presents with noticeable tissue edema, they're sort of uh, an advanced uh, stage in just a compression stocking or even a uh, circade compression Velcro wrap is probably not going to be enough to control it. So obviously it's part of the beginning also because uh, it's a tiered treatment plan to get authorization for pneumatic compression, which is really where, the, uh, where most of my patients ultimately uh, get treated. Uh, I refer them to therapists for manual uh, decongestive therapy, hands-on manual de decongestive therapy. Um, you know, I think that's very helpful. They teach them the idea that this is a chronic problem, that this is uh, not necessarily uh, going to have a defined endpoint. It gives them uh, techniques to use in terms of lymphatic mobilization. And uh, it also reminds them that they have to participate in their care. So, you know, patients with lower extremity edema it, do really need to understand that this is something that, while they can be helped and improved, it is sort of a chronic condition that they are going to need to daily comply with, either a compression garment, um, you know, show up to their therapy appointments, do their home exercises of lymphatic drainage, or actually, if we get them a pneumatic compression pump, wear it. I mean, I have some patients that say, they come in with leg swelling, they complain, they already have a compression pump at home, but they say they're not using it. So, you know, it is a reminder that this is, uh, you know, they do have to participate in their own care. I have seen tremendous response with manual hands-on lymphatic decongestive therapy, you know, and then we combine it with, uh, uh, pneumatic compression. And as part of the initial treatment also, we do um, use uh, medical therapy in the form of a micronized purified flavonoid fraction. It's been shown for years to help with lower extremity swelling and sort of tighten up the vascular system. So as that parallel treatment plan is, is progressing, from the vein side, you know, obviously we do a history and physical. And so the history of lower extremity edema is important. Um, you know, how uh, does the edema vary throughout the day? Is it better in the morning? Is it worse in the evening? Do they return to normal in the morning? Um, or do they have pain? Uh, is it a tight feeling? Um, have they had, obviously, any history of thrombosis or venous disorders, or have they had any prior uh, vein treatments. And so uh, obviously then we do a venous reflux duplex and um, 
and then we see them back and go over their Doppler and you know we we establish the plan we establish the idea that there probably is something to do from a uh, vein therapy point of view to reduce venous hypertension but we leave it out there as let's see how you do with our uh, conservative treatment plan uh, of non-intervention with all the things that we previous mentioned. Um, and then we set up the 28-day uh, evaluation for them to come back for uh, measurements and further documentation of improvement of the, the first tier of therapy so that we can try and get them approved for uh, pneumatic compression. So I rely a lot on pneumatic compression. You know, I think that there are so many trophic effects. You know, there's been so much that has been shown both empirically and uh, in the literature that adding pneumatic compression and uh, an aggressive, let's say, more than gravitational force to, re to reduce edema will improve care tremendously uh, when it comes to intervention. So basically, it's a uh, tiered plan. You know, I think at the base of the pyramid clearly needs to be um, <clears throat> the, uh, let's say, non-interventional techniques for edema. So, um, you know, it really does have to be um, a very sort of base of the pyramid intensive and then not charge into vein intervention. And unfortunately, in this day and age with vein centers, quote unquote, vein experts everywhere, um, you know, it's sort of flipped upside down. I think that the vein intervention comes and then, you know, patient's edema is still there and then um, there, there's really not a lot of impact made for them. So once we do, you are able to use uh, lymphopress, uh, clearly, um, you know, reduce swelling, um, you know, and a vast majority of patients. So what I've experienced from my patients, they love their pump. Uh, basically, as soon as they get their uh, pneumatic compression pump, um, boy, they, they really feel a difference in terms of the tightness of the congestion. Uh, sometimes they say, and, and this is okay, because as a chronic problem, you know, everybody's swelling is going to be different, but sometimes they say the pump works great, my edema goes down, but I stop using the pump and then it recurs. Well, so there's two things that I say to them in response. Number one, then we need to do something in the interim period of time uh, while you are recurring, either wear a, a good compression garment in between or potentially do an intervention to decrease your venous hypertension. But two, that that still is an advantage because for that period of time where they have been offloaded and the swelling has been improved, there's that period of time where their leg has become healthy because that chronic uh, tissue edema and pressure buildup creates all kinds of secondary effects that we know as uh, you know lipodermatosclerosis and thickening of the skin and lymphatic congestion. And so even for that brief period of time while the pump is pumping um, and for that short period of time after in those patients that say they recur so quickly, I feel like it's a benefit because for that period of time, you're helping uh, break that cycle of uh, their swelling. Uh, as far as ease of use, patients find it very comfortable. One of the things that I found in terms of quality with some of the cheaper pumps that um, they were trying to get authorized from some is um, the deflation. You know, Lymphopress is such a quality machine that the um, compartments will fully deflate before the next one will inflate. And that wasn't always the case as um, new devices came onto the market and tried to let's say take market share. So they, they, they became a little less uh, quality. So the importance of that is that you will have uh, decompression, uh, full decompression before you go to the next inflation. So that will allow more active uh, prograde flow and, and decongestion. So the other thing is uh, that Lymphopress has overlap of their um, of their uh, 
compression, um, let's say, compartments. And so what it does is it, is it eliminates much of the uh, edema, the, the gap that may create edema be, between the compartments. So it, it really is the most effective um, pneumatic compression device. Um, it does have a wide pressure range. I mean, they've evolved over time. I know that for patients with uh, really um, advanced uh, lymphedema, you know, the idea is that low pressure is very helpful because the higher pressure may uh, scar or cause further compression of the lymphatic system. Um, so, you know, lymphopress has a low pressure, uh, has a wide pressure range. So for most vein patients, they need higher pressure, but they, it also is quite effective in the, um, in the low pressure range for more pure uh, cutaneous lymphedema. Yeah, so um, clearly the advantage of using um, pneumatic compression to dramatically decrease the uh, swelling is, you know, if you have edema and particularly lymphedema for too long, you're going to have uh, cutaneous hypertension, the risk of ulceration, and obviously the healthcare costs that come along with uh, uh, venous ulceration, and then of course cellulitis. So if you have, you know, chronic edema that's causing lymphatic congestion, because, you know, the two systems run close together. So that's why lymphatic venous edema is really just that. I mean, you can have high vein pressure, and then subsequently it creates lymphatic obstruction, and that lymphatic obstruction predisposes people to cellulitis. And so that recurrent cellulitis is helped with the um, pneumatic compression devices. And so again, decreasing the overall uh, cost of care. And as you know, anybody that's had cellulitis, you know, it creates a lot of scarring in any kind of lymphatic drainage and inhibits uh, uh, return to normal flow. So I, I like this picture because sometimes I show my patients <laughs> what the device is and they're like, that's pretty, that's pretty significant. And um, but when you really understand what it takes, first of all, it's very comfortable. I mean, once they get over the idea that it's a whole moon suit, uh, it's very comfortable, but you really do need to have upper thigh, even for calf swelling or foot and ankle swelling, you need to have upper thigh and sometimes abdominal decongestion because it needs to have outflow. So you can't really just focus on the foot and the calf if you don't have good flow uh, in the thigh and, and the abdomen. So I, I like this because uh, it really shows that you need comprehensive uh, decongestion. Some good lymphocentigraphy about the uh, advantage of lymphopress in terms of what it does to the lymphatic system. So if you can just sort of envision, it's it's not just a pressure phenomenon in the um, you know, squeezing the lymphatic fluid out, it actually is a trophic effect on the lymphatic system. So it improves the lymphatic vessel function. Um, to me, the other important thing that, um, you know, I like about uh, pneumatic compression is uh, patients are engaged. Um, patients feel better when they have their pump. It shows a tremendous improvement and it improves your status with them as a full service comprehensive uh, vein center. Yeah, so that's really all. I mean, this was predominantly, my experience is a very clinical experience. Uh, I, I rely heavily on pneumatic compression, absolutely in a busy center, busy practice. Automate whatever you can in terms of uh, your process. So when I see somebody with lymphedema, or swelling, my my entire staff knows the algorithm. So I don't have to say to them, it's sort of like one box in the EMR and everything trickles down that we're gonna do medical therapy, we're gonna do compression, they're gonna get an appointment for 28 days to get measurements for pneumatic compression. Um, you know, it, it all trickles down. And then of course on the vein side, you know, check the box, they get their venous ultrasound, their appointment follow-up. So, so the more you can automate that, it becomes much less onerous 
uh, in terms of caring for the patient because it's kind of like we never used to like taking care of patients with venous ulcers in a busy vascular clinic because it was time intensive. Well, there are ways to decrease how time intensive caring for patients with uh, leg swelling. Similarly, the documentation. So in your EMR, the distributor that I work with is very good about saying, okay, well, this is the documentation we need. Um, you know, and, and we're able to populate the EMR so that it's really just a lot of um, clicking the boxes rather than having to reinvent the wheel every time. And, um, you know, I think that that ability to sort of automate it, um, it's not that you're automating the care, but you're automating the process makes it, you're much, you're much more likely to, to have a successful interaction with the patient rather than sort of dismissing uh, their problem. So in essence, that's really all I have. Thank you, everybody. Dr. Horwitz, thank you very much for your time. And uh, thank you all very much for your time this evening.